Welcome to Creation Magazine Live. We're going to talk about articles from past issues of the magazine. What do we have today? Well, actually, I chose uh, for this episode uh, an editorial. It's editorial, yes. From Dr. Don Batten. And uh, I just thought it was an interesting one that we should uh, explore a little bit here. It's, yeah, the, uh, the magazine covers such diverse areas. It's called Creation Magazine, and obviously right. the focus is, is evidence for creation, evidence for Genesis. But it also covers the wider question of, is the Bible accurate right. in all areas? And, and, and also refutes the, the common skeptical arguments versus the Bible. So you've got you know, the new atheists out there. You've got Richard right. Dawkins and yeah. Christopher Hitchens. You've got all these guys writing you know, books saying, well, it's, it's, it's unreasonable to be a Christian. It's unreasonable to believe in the yeah, Bible. So you're and deluded if you believe that yeah, there's I mean, a God. And, all yes. this type of stuff. You, we need to be reasonable and rational and scientific. And you, know, you just hear it so many times. So that's kind of what uh, Don is, is covering in this uh, article. It was called Superstition Versus the Christian Faith. Okay. And of course, many uh, skeptics out there would say, well, believing in the Bible or believing in Christianity is a superstition, et cetera. Et cetera. Right, yes. So uh, he, he makes some good points here. Anti-theists equate Christian faith with superstition. Richard Dawkins, caustic opponent of Christianity, described students in Christian schools as taught superstitions drawn from ancient scriptures. So, you know, put, to put your kid in, in a Christian school, that's just, he's actually labeled it as child abuse uh, at one point. <clears throat> he says, ironically, research shows that the Christian faith counters superstitious thinking, such as a belief in astrology or luck. Adding to the irony, the research was published in the Skeptical Inquirer, a periodical founded by atheists to appro oppose Christianity. Mm -hmm. So here's a situation where, you know, they think, well, one thing, but then they actually do the study and it's like, hmm, well, at least they were honest enough to publish the findings. Right. right? This article showed that conservative Christians who are most likely to reject Darwinism were the most likely to reject occult and pseudoscientific notions. Um, conversely, surveys showed that regions poor in Darwin uh, rejecting churches had the most cults, occult activity, and superstition. This should not surprise us. Romans 1, 21, 22 says that people who refuse to honor God descend into futile thinking, and although they think they are smart, they become fools. Right. As someone once quipped, the first effect of not believing in God is to believe in anything. <laughs> um, Bruce Hood, a, psycho a psychology professor at Bristol University, claimed that humans evolved to be susceptible to supernatural beliefs. Now, there's a good way of explaining it, isn't it? But if that's true, then we also evolved to not believe in superstitious beliefs. And, uh, well, then everything that anybody has ever done, that's the way they evolved to be. So it's, to it's not incorporate that yeah. into the evolutionary worldview. Exactly. He juxtaposed creationism and paranormal phenomena, claiming that they are both held by faith alone. He equated religious belief with superstition. However, Professor Hood's definition of superstition shows he does not understand Christian faith superstitious behavior, the idea that certain rituals and practices protect you. This is a common misconception that, that we can manipulate God to do our bidding by being good or praying a lot or going to church or whatever. According to Ephesians 2, 4 to 10, we are saved, protected, not by what we do, but by the grace of God. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespass, made us alive again with Christ. By grace, you've been saved and raised up with him and seated us with him, us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace, you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Dead people can't save themselves, but God made us alive, uh, alive in Christ Jesus. So mm -hmm. he's pointing out that what Christians believe is not typically what you would call superstitious. Like, I'm going to wear a good luck charm, or I'm going to get a lucky rabbit's foot. It wasn't real lucky for right. the rabbit, so I never yeah. got that one anyway. <laughs> um, you know, or that I'm going to do some incantation or something like that. Yes, we pray to God. Right, that if it's in His will, that you know, what we ask for would be taken care of. But um, I don't think I'm going to say a, a prayer and then 
you know, suddenly God's this magic genie in a bottle that's going to come and do my bidding, right. so to yeah. speak. I mean, Christians know that the position of the stars when they were born or the phase of the moon on a given day has absolutely no bearing on whether or not they're going to have good fortune or bad. That's that right, or marry the right, right person yeah. or, or, or all right. this kind yeah. of stuff. Um, he says, furthermore, Christian faith is not faith alone in Hood's misleading sense of, of being without evidence. I mean, every belief system has faith involved in it, right? Including evolution. Including right. evolution. And that's what the, the skeptics keep forgetting to mention or, or they, they don't want it mentioned or they don't think it needs to be mentioned, but it's true that neither can we prove that, prove in the sense of I'm going to show you a scientific experiment showing God creating, but you can't do that with evolution too because you don't have a time machine, you can't go back in time and you can't... Of, of course. I think, I think there's another, there's something else at play. Evolutionists, atheists, most often, yeah. don't believe that they are practicing faith. Right. They, they believe that, th they really believe that it's all about science and what they can prove and what right. they can see. And they talk about science and science is what you can test and observe. And then you ask them, how did and the first you, life form come into being? Well, you can't test and observe that. Oh. Right? It's a faith position about the unobserved past. Well, and yet, but I think a lot of evolutionists don't see, it, don't see themselves as being people of faith, and right. yet they are. Yeah, and, and then if you say, well, if we're going to study science in the present, where does life come from today? Where does where it always come from? Existing life. Louis Pasteur, yeah. Right. So if you're just going to say you're reasonable and rational and say, well, okay, let's, let's extrapolate backwards in time. Well, if it took life to create life, right, then, then this idea of spontaneous generation, there is no, it's it a total work. faith position. Yes. Right? And yeah. you ask them about the Big Bang. What, where did everything come from? Everything came from a Big Bang. Yeah, but what was that seed or that, that germ or, or, or that bit of matter or yeah, energy? But, but that you're not allowed to ask that because the laws of physics break down at, at that point. And right. So, so, but it's, again, it's so a it's untestable. Right? It, as a exactly. matter of fact, some, yep. some uh, physicists have called it a miracle. Well, now you're <laughs> believing in miracles and you're believing in the unobserved. Well, if you're believing in miracles and the unobserved, guess what? It kind of sounds kind of superstitious to me if you're going to use that terminology to, right. de to describe those things. Right. So I, I think you're right. I think a lot of people have got themselves in a deluded mess where they think they're using terms like science and rational, you know, being rational, being reasonable, and being logical. Yes. But logic can't, can't spring out of a big bang that happened X billions of years ago. Where did logic come from? That's a, thought, a mental process. It, it's not, you know coming from matter yes. or, or anything both, like that? Both positions, both historical positions require faith. The Christian requires faith mm -hmm. that the record of history recorded in the Bible is accurate. That's right. our faith position at CMI. It's a faith position of many other people. Or you have a faith position that the record of evolution as written in textbooks or something like that yeah. is accurate. Right. They're both faith positions. I like what he said though. He said, furthermore, Christian faith is not faith alone in Hood's misleading sense of being without evidence. Yes, it's faith, but it isn't without evidence, right? Hood claimed that creationism has been countered by the evidence. He probably also argues that creation should be excluded from science classes because it's not testable. <laughs> Many skeptics seem to embrace these con contradictory notions, right? So we, you can't test creationism, so we can't teach it as science. But we've tested creationism and it's not credible as science. <laughs> you got it one way or the other. Yes, yes. Creation Magazine provides abundant evidence that supports biblical creation. Christian faith involves evidence. It's not blind faith. Luke 1, 1 to 4, John 19, 35, 20, 31, Acts 1 to 3. All these verses, if you look them up, you, you'll see that. So God endowed us with brains and provided evidence, right, that we can test to see if it, if it backs up our faith. Right. The, the Christian faith is a reasonable faith. Yes, it's faith, but it's, it, it's got a lot of evidence right. to support it. Yeah.